Hi everyone, Stock Mo for those who are new to the channel. And yes, we got major announcements out there. We're talking about the debt ceiling and how this could affect the markets. I know most people believe the markets are going to explode higher, but is that going to be the case? I am out there investing that the answer is going to be no, of course. And I'll tell you some of the positions I'm looking at for that. But there is a lot of other news because the economy is going to get hit by this a little sooner than expected. But they're making a big deal out of this news, but it's not much different from where we were just a little bit ago. And I'm talking about the student loan drama. There is a part in this that deals with it. And for those who have any student loans or know people have student loans, you're going to want to stick around because this is going to get interesting. Now, before we get into it, make sure you come over and sign up down below for Patreon. Join, and as you can see, you can find the latest moves out there, as well as portfolios, the private Discord, all kinds of good stuff. Get those free stocks from Moomoo as well. All you got to do is click the link in the description, put $100 in, you get up to, well, you're going to get 10 free stocks worth up to $2,000 apiece. And if you put a dollar or more in over at Weeble using my link, you got to use the link you will get up to 12 stocks worth up to 30,600. Take advantage of those folks. There's a lot of things going on. Now, more importantly, what was this thing I was talking about? Well, first things first, we know there's a deal. You can see this. Biden and McCarthy have a debt ceiling deal. Here's what's in it. And they go through it, which we'll talk a little bit about. I, I'm going to actually not be very happy with this, just so people realize, because I want to discuss the problems I see. Here's the latest on this. As you can see, student loan payment pause gone under debt ceiling deal. Now, for everyone out there that has a student loan and you're wondering what this means, in 60 days from the date they sign this deal, which probably Wednesday or Thursday of this week, we see student loans come back. That means probably we're looking at the what, first week of August, most people will have their student loans reinstated. But does this cancel out? You know, we got the student loan forgiveness. Well, the, stu the Supreme Court is actually looking at that. We expect an answer from that in June. And so no matter what, though, we had Biden saying that student loans, no matter what, we're going to come back by the end of August. So this isn't far off from what they said already, even though they're making this big like, oh, student loans are coming back. Well, and they're trying to make it seem <clears throat> like it's so bad. It's just cutting it from at the latest the end of August to now we know it's going to happen during the first week of August. So you're just losing a couple weeks at max. But if the student loan comes out from the Supreme Court, say June 1st, well, it's still 60 days from then. And even though this agreement would have been like, could be a couple of days after that, it's still a 60 days from when the Supreme Court issues their judgment or when they sign this deal. Either way, you were looking probably in the beginning of June for those answers. So now we see what's going on. Now, as we go forward, we got some other things we wanted to discuss. And I wanted to get into this because I'm, I'm just shaking my head that all this went down. All of this went down for the student, for not the student loan, for the, the debt ceiling. Unbelievable, folks. This is disgusting. Take a look at the national debt. The national debt is rising like a champ right now, $31 trillion going up. Well, you can see how much it goes up. It goes up 100000 every few, few seconds. That is a lot of money that we are borrowing. We are spending, just so people understand this, more money than we bring in. In a normal household, you can't do that. You will absolutely be crushed and you would have to cut spending. Not here. Not here in the United States. What am I talking about? Well, they got this whole debt deal and this uh, debt ceiling deal focused for the AI route. So they're talking about this. But what did the deal actually do? Well, the deal, as you look at this clock, it gives us basically they're allowed to spend really what they spent in 2022, what they spent in 2023. No raise, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, in 2024, but they can still spend what they spent this year. And, and then 2025 are given a 1% raise. It sounds good on paper. It sounds great, right? Whoa, that's fantastic. Isn't it? They cut, they, they froze spending. But <laughs> if you look at what they spent in 2022, 1.4 trillion above and beyond what they collected. Folks, this is unheard of. And then you thought, well, maybe it got better in 2023. Oh, it got better for the politicians because they spent even more. They spent 
five, most likely, this is their projections, 1.5 trillion right now. And it could be more by the end of the year, above and beyond what we were supposed to. Folks, this isn't anything. If anybody looks at this debt ceiling agreement as a success, I I just can't understand what you're looking at. That's like telling somebody, go out and spend $1,000. We don't have any more money, but they go out and they spend uh, $1,200. And you say, what are you doing? We don't have the $200. Then all of a sudden they're like, well, it's I spent it. So next time I won't do, I won't spend more. Well, you can't spend $1,200. We don't have the $200 extra. Well, let's just freeze it at $1,200. That's the first thing. I'm going to freeze it at $1,200. And I won't spend, but we only collect $1,000. But the other person, I want to spend $1,200. So I'll tell you what. I'll freeze it at $1,200 the next two years. And then the next year after that, we'll take it up a little bit higher. That's what this deal was basically like. It, it's ridiculous to look at it. We are way above what we collect in revenue. We should absolutely be taking a look at this because this all you're doing is kicking the can down the road. The future generations to win this debt becomes so high that we're talking bad things happen. You can look at other countries that got to this point out there. And I'm telling you, it's not going to be pretty. They have chances to fix these things now, but they're just kicking the can down the road. So anybody that looks at this, I don't care if you're red or blue, this is a problem. You cannot continue to spend this much money above and beyond what we collect. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. People say, well, they froze them. Oh, isn't that good? No, it's not good. When you're spending multiples above where we used to spend above and beyond our, our budget, this is just getting ugly. It's like, hey, let me borrow $100. Okay, well, you did it once. Let me borrow 200 Well, eventually it, it gets to the point that they can't pay you back because they borrowed so much money. It's going to happen here with our government is they continue to borrow trillions of dollars, over a trillion dollars a year. We're getting closer to $2 trillion above and beyond our revenue. And it's only getting worse. And no one's doing anything about it. Well, they gave it a 1% increase above and beyond. And remember that 1% increase is for the overall budget. It's ridiculous. Oh, goodness gracious. So how's the market going to react to this? That's what a lot of people are wondering. That comes out at six o'clock. The futures come out. Now, remember, the markets are closed on Monday in the U.S., but the futures will open and it'll give us an idea how this gets priced in. I came out and I said, is this going to be a sell the news kind of event or are we going to get? And I thought we'd probably get maybe two to three good days. And everybody's like, well, it's done. Oh, relief. Ooh. And then when they actually sign it and it passes and everything, you see a sell off like everything ran up. And then you see that sell off. Are we going to get that? Or is this, as the bulls would love to see, the final catalyst to really propel us up there to 5,000 in the S&P 500 and all that good stuff? We're not sure. We're going to wait and see. Remember, I thought we'd trade between 38.50 and 42.50. We're up there at the upper end. We didn't break 42.50 yet. I think the resistance is strong there. Not sure where we're going to go with it, but I'm definitely watching. Uh, as for the Fed, guys, if you have not been watching this, major issues out there. 64% uh, chance of raising the, uh, the, the Fed rate hike again in June. I, I, I don't blame them. I think the Fed should now at this point. When you see the government not literally even cutting spending, just keep spending, guys. Just go, go, spend, spend, spend. I think the Fed now is, is just pushed into a corner. I think the Fed has to raise rates because now spending isn't coming back. Now, one thing in the side of the Fed is the student loan pause, which is going to go away now. That'll take a little bit of that demand away from the retail people out there. And so now they got to pay some of those bills. But interest rates from their credit cards are going to continue to go higher. As you can see, the odds of a rate hike are getting just increasingly high. And so we're going to find out how this thing goes. But I did want to warn everyone, there's some ugliness out there. And I'm not the only one seeing it. As you can see here. JP, this is the CEO of uh, JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs, David Solomon and Jamie Dimon. They both see headwinds coming for the U.S. Now it's going to come a little bit sooner. And so we're starting to see these things out there. Now, hopefully this opens your eyes to what's happening out there, especially with the student debt. It is absolutely crazy. And there's one other thing I wanted to show you. Check this out for those that haven't seen it. This is the credit card debt right here, um, right here, $1.3 trillion dollars in credit card debt and that continues to go higher and higher 
quicker and quicker because people are borrowing money like there's no tomorrow. And every time the Fed raises the rate, everybody's variable rate goes higher by that 0.25%. And that gets expensive. You can take this number here and add in that 25 basis points in interest on this. It is crazy high. So a lot of things happening out there. I'm not sure how the market's going to react. I think it's going to be one of them sell the events by the end of this week. Now, if June plays out like I think it's going to play out, we are going to see maybe a little volatility, a little push up higher Why we are still here with the good news from the, the debt ceiling. But depending, depending, because they didn't cut spending. That's actually good for, I would argue, for the market. But of course, the liquidity is going to come out of the equities when the Treasury has to re get that, that replenish about five to six hundred billion dollars for the bills and everything in short amount of time. So I think maybe the first week of June is the only week you might see some positivity. And then I think as the Fed does their thing with the Treasury, it's going to get ugly. That's my take on it. You can look into it, do your research, see what you see. But then after that, maybe July's a little bounce back. I'm not sure. <laughs> Once we get into August, with the student loans coming due, and depending on what the Supreme Court says, if they go ahead and allow forgiveness, that's good news. If they don't allow for forgiveness, I think that will change the markets as well, because that's a, that's millions of people who now have student loan payments yet again. And so that would absolutely hit demand. So there's a lot of things to watch here. We'll keep an eye on it. But there's your update, folks. And good news, we sold out of New York City for those who were watching. That is fantastic. We did it in under a day. And so I'll be seeing everybody with the core four. Larry Jones, you got me, Stockmo, Keenan Grace in Stocks with Josh in New York City, June 7th. That's going to be a great time. We'll be down there and we're going to do our thing. I have a, a nice event hosted by Moomoo. So I'm looking forward to that. If you haven't done it, get the free stocks from Moomoo down below using the link in the description, as well as the free stocks from Weeble. Any deposit for Weeble, you get up to 12 stocks worth up to 30,600. And then come on over and join me at the Patreon or join down below here as a YouTube member. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.